eternity Kurtz and uh, I am a guitarist and vocalist and songwriter and producer and uh, I love coming to Spain and I, I'm, a, I'm a road dog I, I, I live for touring I, I feel very at home on the stage I, I always have felt very um, comfortable on stage it, it doesn't feel like an unnatural situation like it does for a lot of performers I I, I, um, I don't I don't feel like there's that much of a difference between being on stage and playing alone it, it feels very natural and comfortable for me more comfortable than a lot of social situations usually are well all my albums are, are very different than one another um, I mean the first album the first studio record I did postcards from downtown introduced me to Europe and and that was a huge change because my audiences got much larger and I, I felt for the first time that I, I may not have to do other work like I felt like oh I'm, I'm, I might be allowed to do this for the rest of my life the reviews were very good and my crowds were large and and there was a bit of critical attention and it was very satisfying um, and I felt like I'd I felt like I was finally coming into my own as a writer, and that was important. And each record is very, I mean, it's, it's kind of all part of the same path. I mean, the most two recent records that are records where I'm kind of, or three records that I'm sort of more deeply exploring the American roots music that I love so much. Um, you know, they feel like something that's very settling in, but each record, feels like I'm becoming more who I am you know it's it's not I can't point to one record over another that feels more me um, they all they all feel like they're all part of the same continuum even though they take detours stylistically they all feel like things whatever I need to explore at that particular time they're all pretty honest expressions of where I'm at musically um, it's uh, I look good and bad which is um you know, I look good, you know, uh, Boca Chica, but uh, uh, I, I look good when, when I'm malo, mala, malo, malo, I, I look good when I'm bad. <laughs> it's, it's the best I can do. <laughs> Oh, 
heart fills up with doubt influenced by uh, singers like Nina Simone and uh, Donny Hathaway and Sam Cooke. Writing-wise, I'm very influenced by Leonard Cohen and Bob Dylan, Tom Waits. Guitar-wise, I can't say I'm influenced, you know, I'm influenced by a lot of blues guitar. I'm influenced by Lightning Hopkins and uh, Sunhouse and a lot of slide players, for sure. I don't, I, I'm not fond of genres. I'm not, I, I always, I always thought genres were a little bit of a cage, you know, they don't, that it's all soul music, you know. There's nothing that good for me that comes from labeling myself because I don't fit n neatly enough to any of the categories as the categories, especially in America where the categories are very jazz, blues, Americana, folk, country, you know, people are very particular about what they call what they call different things. And I've never fit very neatly in any of them. And my favorite artists never fit in a category either. That Nina Simone and Ray Charles, they never, you could never call them one thing. They were always lots of things. They were hyphens, they were R&B and soul and jazz, and they were folk and jazz and blues and, and stuff. And, and, and because who they were was so, beyond genre that um, you know the, gen the, the names of the genres became irrelevant and so that's my goal is to make genre specifics irrelevant like I don't you know the, my heroes were, were a little beyond genre and I, I think genre is um, a trap it's not uh, you know music is music I don't I, I don't like I, I, Especially now, when it used to be that you, you know, you grew up in Georgia in America and you only listened to country music, or you grew up in a black neighborhood in New York and you only listened to soul music and or gospel music or whatever you were exposed to. And now we all have the whole world of music at our fingertips at any given time. If you're curious about what music from Venezuela or Nigeria sounds like, you can find out in 10 or 20 seconds. And so the idea that you would align yourself with this teeny little thing to me is limiting. It's, you know, it's exciting to me to draw from so much information that we didn't used to have that I, I, I kind of refuse. I refuse to pin myself down. I don't, I don't do it. There, there's a couple of artists who were really inspiring, not just because of their music, but because of who they were as people. 
and there's a couple of people. Uh, Richie Havens was a really big influence on me when I was very young, and um, he wound up being a mentor of mine. And his kindness on the road was really incredible. And Mavis Staples as well. I just re uh, only a couple of years ago was the first time that I opened it for her, and I wound up opening it for her twice. And it was beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. And Richard Thompson was really inspiring because his tour was such a like the guys in the band have been together for I think 40 years now. You know, they're they, they're. Their grandfathers, all of them, and their old, old friends, and they were a family, but not just a family, but a very functional family. Like the tour itself was very healthy. Like everybody, the crew, everybody was very well treated, and it was like kind of a model. I was like, God, these guys are in their 60s, and they're, you know, and they're doing this in a health, like it's possible to have, to make this be your life, and have it be your job, and have it be a comfortable and safe and and mellow place to be and uh, and he was inspiring just in terms of like how how it could look from the rest of my life you know like okay well you know it, it, can, it can be a good you know you, you surround yourself with good people whose a company you enjoy and and your tour can look like this you know the last album I, to me I, I moved to New Orleans and to me this record even the parts of it that I recorded in New York are very much influenced by New Orleans. It's very, and the thing that I'm drawn to in New Orleans music is that um, it expresses joy in a way that's not shallow, that has depth and soul and darkness in it, and it's a very complicated kind of joy. And that to me is what New Orleans music is, and and, and that's what I was really drawing from. That's what I, I've been kind of attracted to in the city of New Orleans and that's why I moved there. So this music, this particular record is more New Orleans than any record I've ever done. Hello baby Yes, it's really me After all the wrong I've done, bet you're surprised to see me. Here at your door, like a sparrow with a broken Come back to beg you Reconsider me Please Reconsider me Yeah. 
Hi, I'm Dana Kurtz, and this is Clamores TV, and I love Sala Clamores.